Hi, the bridge of Freeland, and uh, for me it is always the bridge I drive by, I pass by and you just keep on going and there is so much to discover. Freeland is beautiful. This uh, blue is part of a bridge over the river Vecht. It was part of a connection between Hilversum and Finkeveen. And uh, in those days the roads were just being developed, there were no freeways yet. And this part, uh, this bridge here, was made by the architect Dudok. He was the city architect of Hilversum. And there is a nice safe crossing for bikes and pedestrians going through this tunnel, bringing me to the real Freeland centre. Here I am at one of the oldest places of Freeland. Behind me, the grass field, is the place where the castle was. Today it's just a field to walk your dog. Uh, till the 60s it was a soccer club playing here on the grass. But if it has been snowing and uh, you can look through, you see the real ground plan with the round towers, the little square shape of the castle that once was there. 1255, the Bishop of Utrecht had his castle made here as a fortification point to make sure he could travel and do trade over the river Vecht and pass through because this is just at the border of Holland with the Counts and Utrecht where the bishop was ruling. 1265, Freeland even got city rights. That important uh, Freeland was to them. And opposite the grass where the castle was is my favorite house of Freeland. This house, white, Arab looking with the green dome, is so beautiful, so different. Um, in 1832 there was a man who bought the place. He started to build a summer house on the grounds of very likely a medieval home. And it was in 1907 that it got changed into very likely a very romantic, uh, exotic uh, idea of building uh, houses. And above the door of the apartments now in the old town hall is the coat of arms of Freeland. And there's such a nice connection with Utrecht. It shows the um, St. Martin uh, in the coat of arms, the saint that cut off half of his cloak to donate to a beggar. And that is also the patron saint of the city of Utrecht. Connection. There's plenty of things uh, to do here. When everything is back open again, ice cream on the corner. Behind me here is a wonderful pancake restaurant, the Terrace is super in the summer, the pancakes as well, or just an apple pie with coffee. And around the corner, also still a supermarket. Till 1950, there were more than 40 shops here. Can't imagine, tiny, tiny town now. This is the beautiful bridge downtown Freeland, uh, a steel iron drawbridge. There used to be a wooden drawbridge already forever, and uh, it was a connection in the 16th century between on the right side, the old part, and here on the left side, the new part of Freeland. This bridge um, had uh, a place where you had to pay toll money. The little white house on the right is the house where the family of the bridge keeper used to live. And uh, he came out and demanded toll for the boats to pass. And this was the passageway from Utrecht to the North Sea, northbound. So quite some boats passed and still do today as tourist boats. It's quiet now, but so busy in the summer days. Gorgeous places. And this place, this house, is my all time memory. It used to be a snack bar where we went here on our bikes, biking 5k to get an ice cream. The highlight of the week. So, this church was dedicated once to Saint Nicholas, the patron saint of all the traders. And during the Reformation in the 16th century, it became a Protestant church, no longer Catholic. All the pictures in the windows got smacked out as well as the statues. And again something happened uh, when Napoleon was ruling our country. Around uh, 1810 or 1800 Napoleon got here and he took away the steeple. He had a beautiful flat platform then and this church was part of many churches that had um, like a signaling system on the top and in a few hours they could message across a message, a signal across a message from Amsterdam to Paris. And then this street behind me was the tiny road where the trucks have passed for decades with all the loads of the barrels of the paint, whatever they were transporting from the factory van Leer. Let's go have a look. Well, isn't that a lovely picture? The old sailboat, the windmill, and windmill de Ruiter has been here for a long time, but originally it was a polder mill pumping water in North Holland. 
it has been brought over here, changed into a grinding mill for flour and still on Saturdays from 10 till 4 you can buy here your fresh grinded flour um, from the volunteers that run the mill. There's a lot to say more and show you uh, about Vreeland, but that I like to keep for a live city walk. Join me one of these days and for now, thank you for being here on the video uh, tour through Vreeland. Bye!